Well, it's turned out to be an absolutely beautiful afternoon here at Kind Fibers, and I thought I would take this opportunity to go ahead and get this video done that I've wanted to do for a while. This is our video on sheep hooves. I know it sounds so boring. What do sheep hooves really have to do with anything? Well, if you want to have healthy sheep and happy sheep, then you need to deal with their hooves. If you're new to shepherding and want to find out more about sheep hooves, or you've been shepherding for a while and just want to know what I know about sheep hooves, please enjoy the video. I'm Mariah, and these are the videos of a woman homesteader. So before we get too far into the video, the first thing I want to say is that I am not a veterinarian. I am a shepherd. I am sharing my experience of what I've learned over the years, but I can in no way, shape or form, nor can a video, nor can the accompanying blog post to this video, which is linked down below. None of that can replace a veterinarian. And with hooves, there are definitely times that you need to go see a vet. And we're going to talk about that today. Huh. So now that's out of the way. Let's get into the meat of things. First, I'm going to show you a video of me trimming Lily's hooves uh, back in April and then kind of like go through a normal hoof trimming process kind of step by step and then meet me back here on the porch and we're actually going to delve into kind of lecture style all the things that can go wrong and how I personally take care of it and what you may be able to do or not be able to do and when to actually get into calling the veterinarian if you're over your head. So that's kind of going to be the format and layout of the video. It's going to be a little bit longer and uh, I really hope that if you find it helpful and informative that you will please like and subscribe to the channel. So I'll see you back here in just a little while. Starting at the outer wall. I simply trim and I'm not going real deep, just leveling things up. And I go in for a second pass. Sometimes it takes several passes and then I trim the inside and then I trim down the toe a little bit, not deep, just whatever's loose. That's the big thing is get whatever's loose. And then I go up and kind of just clean up a little bit after those initial taking off bits. And then I move on to the other foot. Again, just following what's already there, not reinventing anything. If it's to the point it needs to be reinvented, then you need an expert. Checking it over and she's done. That's it. I hope you enjoyed watching Lily's hoof be trimmed. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the hoof and the structure. So here's my little diagram that I made. I am not an artist. I'm a farmer, so you'll have to kind of uh, deal with that. But this is kind of the basic of their claw or hoof or how you want to call it different people call it different things. But basically we have two toes, so a split, and then they have skin between those two uh, hooves and all holding it together. And you have your outer wall, the hard outer part here, and then you have the inner wall of the hoof. So basically you have this soft sole or soft horn area and they've got their sole and they've got their heel and then surrounding that to protect it is the harder horn like uh hard horn material that uh, protects their their feet so that is the basic anatomy 
of the hoof when you're looking at it. And when you're trimming the hoof, you're not trying to redefine and redesign the hoof. Um, these are not horses, they are sheep. I like to about once a year have my farrier do a more uh, in-depth trim and then the rest of the year I just trim them to keep their hooves in good shape. If my farrier can't get here then I you know have my my shearer do it if it's a year that I can have a shearer in unlike this year or you know if worst case comes then I'll get the vet out to do it which is a much more expensive process than the rest of it. Um, so, so with trimming the hooves, all we're doing is we're just taking that overgrowth right on the edge of the outer walls of, of this here and this here. And as you could see with lilies, it kind of grows over that soft sole. So all we're doing is just very carefully trimming it down so that the soft sole and the outer hard horn are at the same level. That's all you want to do nothing more. So that's, uh, that's the basis of trimming the hooves. I do use, uh, actual hoof trimmers for goats and sheep that I got at tractor supply and I've never had any problems with them. I have used them for a couple years. I really like them. Uh, some people suggest using garden shears, like what you do, like rose bushes and stuff with don't waste your money doing that. You can end up hurting your sheep. I, tried that the first year and it was not a good experience. Get the actual ones made for sheep and goats. Um, so moving on to all the things that can go wrong. Um, and don't, don't think that everything in the world can go wrong or it will all the time. And like, it's horrible and stuff because it's not in seven years. I have had maybe five cases and we're talking out of all the sheep five cases of anything that was really more than just a regular trimming uh that's it <laughs> so it's not something that goes wrong all the time as long as you keep uh your sheep's hooves inspected and keep them trimmed properly so but we are going to talk about the things that can go wrong first of all is hoof rot now, what hoof rot is, is when this uh, kind of area here, the skin can get infected or sometimes the outer hard horn and the inner softer part can kind of separate uh, and then bacteria and muck and mud and all the things that sheep leave everywhere gets in there and it starts to rot and it smells, it stinks. It smells like rotting flesh. And the reason why is because that's exactly what's happening. It's incredibly painful to your sheep and you'll see them kind of limping along. Um, and they're, sometimes it'll get up into like their upper part and their, their, around their hooves and like their joints will get hot and all. It's, it's nothing to play around with. It's highly contagious. It's literally rotting their flesh away. Um, so it has to be treated. The main cause is wet and humid weather and wet pastures combined with dirt. And then like they may have like a small crack or overgrowth of the outer horn will cause it too. So those are like kind of how it happens. Now, how you treat it or how I treat it is that uh, I trim, make sure the hoof is trimmed properly. And then I use uh, zinc sulfide to uh, soak their hoof in, like pretty much up to their ankle. And when you're coming from cattle and goats, you're always told to use copper, but sheep are not copper friendly. Uh, copper will kill your sheep. So I don't even put it on their hose to treat it or anything. It's recommended to, to use zinc sulfate. That's what my vet has told me to use. That's what most of the books I've read have told me to use is zinc sulfate. And you just mix it according to the package direction, soak their hoof in it, which is super fun to do. And uh, then you, I've always been told to give them antibiotics, to use a penicillin, 
Cillin G at one millimeter per 100 pounds for three days. Um, and that's for a mild case of it. So we're talking about like when it's first starting, if it's like to the point, like their upper hoof and like their ankle and all is starting to get hot or they're limping severely or they're acting like just really off, then that's the kind where you need to go and see your veterinarian. Um, so, but if it's just really mild and you catch it like the first time, like first day they start limping and get it under control right away, it is something you can take care of at home yourself um, in most cases. So that's, that's how I handle hoof rot. Uh, the next thing that uh, I've seen, and I've never had problems with it until year before last, and we just had it the one year and we only had it in the Romneys, is something called Shelly hoof or white line. And that is when the sole, the soft sole and the outer horn start to separate. And it doesn't just separate down at the bottom, it starts separating like pretty far up. Um, poor Lily, her back hoof uh, had to actually be, the outer wall be trimmed out so that, you know, like here's her, like say the, okay, say this is the outer part of her hoof. It had to be trimmed up like almost a quarter of the way. And I was just like, oh, this is awful. but it grew out and it grew out fine and she healed fine and we kept an eye on it and we kept, you know, the part that was not trimmed up way high, but was on the bottom. So like, say she has, you know, like this here trimmed up real high and then there's this and then there's this and the rest of it, we just kept that trimmed as the rest of it grew out, grew out beautifully, no problems. And, uh, the theory is with Shelly line, Shelly hoof or white line, that it's genetic. There's like a looseness kind of between the, the two parts of the hoof. So there's kind of like a looseness between the hard outer part and the inner soft part because Daisy had it. Uh, Pepper had it. Iris had it and Lily had it and all four of them are Romneys and they're all four related. None of the other sheep have ever had it. So I'm kind of like, well, that genetic thing kind of sounds like it may be, you know, valid, but it also happened during a time of like just really wet weather all of a sudden. And so I think just kind of the combination of that, you know, kind of genetic predisposition with a little bit wetter pasture, just kind of set it off. But thankfully that didn't turn into hoof rot because that can turn into hoof rot and be very serious. So that is, uh, that's white liner Shelly hoof. And let's see, impacted toe glands. <laughs> this is a fun one. <laughs> I had this with Brock a few years ago. He hates having his feet messed with. I mean, he hates it. So, okay. <laughs> here's, here's his, you know, here's his leg. Here's his ankle coming down to the hoof. Sheep, and I did not know this. Sheep have a gland right here. So here's a toe, here's a toe. There's a gland right there. That gland can get impacted like a zit. <laughs> like basically he had a black head between his toes. <laughs> and it started getting kind of ooky and he was kind of like limping around and it wasn't smelling or anything, nothing infected. It was more like a blackhead. And so I had to like kind of just gently press that out. And I called my vet and I was like, what is this? And he's like, oh yeah, that happens sometimes. It's not really a big deal. He's like, is there any pus? I said, no, no pus. And he's like, okay. He's like, it should clear up. He's like, just you know, just keep an eye on it. And then he told me that if it didn't come out easily, I should soak his feet in warm water and kind of soften it up and then squeeze gently. And if that didn't come out or if it was bloody or pussy or anything like that, then I needed to go to the vet or have the vet come out to see and treat uh, my dear broccoli butt. So, so 
that was really kind of like wild because I, you know, five, six years into shepherding and I had never realized that they had a toe gland that could get impacted. Things you learn with sheep. Uh, and then finally, there's something called granuloma and that is from over trimming the hoof. And it's really important to trim your hooves. It's really important to inspect your sheep and how they're walking and all of that uh, to make sure you're catching everything on time. You need to be physically inspecting and looking at your sheep's hooves every month to two months, possibly three months. It depends on how rocky your ground is, how much time they spend up in the barn. But uh, if the hoof is over trimmed to the point that it bleeds and you're getting up into the coronal bands and stuff like that, then proud flesh, just like what grows on an overgrown toenail on a human, starts growing over their hoof. And that is something that is 100% call the vet. I've never seen it. I don't know anybody who's ever seen it. Uh, and that's why I say it's one of those things you really need to call the vet because it's not very common. I don't know anybody who knows what to do with it. So it's nothing that I would tackle on my own. So that's that and any kind of injury to a hoof where it is bleeding, bloody, pussy, anything like that is the time to get your veterinarian involved or to find somebody who's been doing sheep for like 20, 30 years and who, <laughs> who will know what to do, who's seen so much. Um, because I've, I've only been doing this for seven years. So I've seen a lot and I know a lot, um, but there's a lot more that people who've been doing it for decades know. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the wrap up on hooves. It's nothing major, they're not scary, but uh, I thought since I'm doing the shepherding series that I would let you know about hooves and if you would like to know a little bit more or you'd like to see this in a written format, I've linked my blog post on my hooves below. And then from there, you can kind of go to some of the other blog posts on uh, sheep and shepherding. And that, of course, will be growing over the coming years as I continue to add. I hope you found this video informative and educational and that you have the best of success in your shepherding experience. Until next time, and all you do, craft no harm. Bye! Kind fibers, craft no harm. You don't craft harm, do you, Iris? Huh? Do you? You don't? No, you don't. You good boy. <laughs>